So let's sort of refresh our memory. Uh, let's say, let's say we've got that we've got five letters. And I have, so A, B, C, D, E. And if I want to create a three-letter word, right, then it's one, two, three, and you ask yourself how many options, if the back, back when order matters, how many options do we have for the first spot? Five, right? How many options do we have for the second spot? Four. How many options do we have for the third spot? Three. And so we ended up with, there are 60 ways where I can, you know, if I have five things, how can I put, pick three of them and put them in order, right? Because the order matters. Well, um, and where did we get that 60? Where did we get the five times four times three? Well, that was this little formula where it was the permutation of five things taken three at a time. And that formula was this thing where it was five factorial over five minus three factorial. And then while you think that's absolutely ridiculous, like you know, and I, I would, I think it would be ridiculous to use the formula. I think it would be much easier just to put dashes out. If you work this out, we're at five times four times three times two times one, and then five times three is two factorial, so you end up with two times one. Those cancel, and so that's where we get the five times four times three. So today we're going to talk about, um, okay, what does it mean when order doesn't matter, and kind of the same situation, but now instead of trying to put and uh, try to put these uh, put the ping pong balls in order, now the question is. Imagine you have a bag, and you have five ping pong balls with A, B, C, D in the bag, and what I want to do is I want to pick out a group of three ping pong balls, right? And so it doesn't matter the order, which means, you know, that it doesn't matter if you pull them out A, B, C, A, C, B, B, C, A, uh, B, A, C, C, A, B, and C, B, A. All of these are the exact same thing. I mean, I'll, I, I, does, does everybody understand that part? If order doesn't matter, do you see that all six of these are the exact same thing? So the big idea between when uh, there's a sort, of a sort of a core difference between when order matters and order doesn't matter, right? When, when order doesn't matter, you get fewer differences. Uh, because since all of these are the same, uh, like all of these would be different if order matters, but since all of these are the same when order doesn't matter, the numbers we're going to be dealing with today are going to be smaller than if we put down dashes. Does that kind of make sense? Right? So how do we, you know, how, how do we change this formula? Well, this is called, so Last class, we taught it was called a permutation. That was when order mattered. Today, it's called a combination. Right. And the difference is, instead of 5P3, it's going to be 5C3. Right. And the official formula looks like this. It's over 3 factorial. Um, in practice, here's what you do. Um, if you're ever going to compute 5C3, five, five and I've got another way of saying this, the 5 factorial still goes on top. You get two numbers on the bottom. Both of them are going to have factorials, right? One number will be this, so we'll get the 3 factorial. And then you have to make sure that this number, this plus this, have to add up to 5. So what's this have to be? 2. And so this is going to give us a 2 factorial. So to compute this, so 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And let's do 3 times 2 times 1, and then a 2 times 1. Those are going to cancel. 2 goes into 4 2 times, and so this gives us 10. So the difference is, right? Um, and so if you're doing a combination, notice here if order mattered, we got 60 different choices. In this one, when order doesn't matter, we only have 10 different things. All right, now, I, uh, I want to talk about, like, uh, I want to talk about uh, how you say certain things. So, actually, 
quickly. Here is my classic example of, let's compare the differences between order matters and order doesn't matter. Right? We're going to have two situations. Right? Same kind of group. So let's say that I have a class size of 25 students. Right? On one side, we're going to elect a, vet, a president, a vice president, and a secretary. Okay? And on the other side, I want a committee of three. All right? So let's talk about what, what does it mean for order matter and order doesn't matter. So which side is order matter? Because if, if you have a particular position, right, then that means order matters. So if you think about it, if I've got a president, vice president, secretary, right, how many options do you have for president? You've got 25 students. So how many options do you have for president? 25. How many options do you have for vice president? 24. How many options do we have for a secretary? 23, and when we multiply all those, what do we get? So somebody with a calculator, please tell me. Because I can't do this in my head. Hmm. Okay, so we're getting 13,800. All right, so if you got a class of 25, then there's, you know, all 13,800 ways to elect a president, vice president, a secretary. Now, Let's think about this class of 25, and now I want a committee of three, right? And do you see that if I want a committee of three that the order doesn't matter? It matters if you're in the committee or you're not in the committee, but once you're in the committee, does it matter what order you're selected? You're just part of that group. And so anytime you're part of something, that means order doesn't matter. And so this is, and, and the notation for this is going to be, 25 and that C I always call it choose. So think of this as 25 choose 3. And if you use that word choose to represent C, it's almost simulating that you're just picking a group of. You're choosing a group of, in this case, students. Right. Now, as now you might think this is hard to compute by hand, uh, but believe it or not, this uh, doing the combination is actually easier by hand that's way easier by hand than this and there's there's some tricks that happen so let's see what let's see how this computes so to compute this it's 25 factorial so whatever the big number is that goes on top and then you got to make sure that these two numbers add to 25 so one of the numbers is 3 so I'm going to have 3 factorial what's the other number 22 Is everybody okay with that? So we've got 25, you like to pick the big number, put it up here, and then the small number, put it here, you just have to make sure whatever, this, these two things have to add up to 25. And before you think you have to use a calculator, uh, my claim is I think, everybody in, I think everybody in here and even online can do this. Right. So let's think what 25 factorial actually means. So it's going to give us 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 times dot dot dot. Okay. Now let's think of 22 factorial. Well, that's 22 times 21 times dot dot dot. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. What do you notice happens? What cancels? 22 all the way down cancels, so that's okay, right? And then you think about, well, okay, can we see that 3 times 2 times 1 is 6? And so that's a 6. How many times does 6 go into 24? 4, four. four times. Are we okay? A 6 goes into 24. What's 25 times 4? Right? And then 100 times 23 is 2300. You see what I mean? That everybody in here could compute that. Now, in practice, you'll have a calculator, right? And some of you may have already found, you may have already found this, right? It wasn't too hard to find. How close was it to the, how close was this to the one with the P? It's like right below it, isn't it, right? 
Yeah. Like because when you like when you when you found the NPR right like right below it was the NCR right mm -hmm. so you already know where this is right I'm just so you're allowed to you know you're obviously allowed to use a calculator to compute this but I, I did want to show that it was possible to compute by hand and it really wasn't that bad uh, I do need to talk about notation uh, this is a newer notation and I kind of think it's because that's what calculators do. Um, the older notation, and actually like this, almost looks like a fraction, uh, is, uses, it uses parentheses. This would be 25 choose 3. So if you ever see something like this, it means this. Okay. Uh, it's the, this is the old way of doing it, and I actually prefer this. And uh, the problem I'm going to give you actually use this information. Uh, sometimes they give it to you like this. I think it's a little more condensed. And I'm probably just partial to it because this is how I was taught. And then, like, newer textbooks started writing it this way, and so I started writing that already. Right. All right, are, are we okay with this idea of, you know, how to count when order doesn't matter? Now, the, it, now there are instances where it's tricky, right? Um, you do have one problem. I didn't realize this until I already handed it out. I didn't think there was going to be anything that was tricky. There is one problem that I'm giving that is a little bit tricky. So I'll, if you look at this and say, wait, I don't know how to do this. Remember, I did tell you there's, there's one problem, right? Um, all right, so are we okay with this? All right, so, you know, when order doesn't matter. Uh, let's look at some tricky problems for just a second, right? I, I, there, uh, there are some interesting applications of this. Uh, one very interesting application. Uh, let's see. Which one do I want to do first? Okay, yeah. So the, the first one I want to do is I want to, it's, I, it's known as the handshake problem. What's the handshake problem? So let's say that we have eight people in class, which is not, okay, we do have eight people in class. Okay, that works. Okay. And what I want to know is, we can kind of simulate this, uh, how many handshakes could happen for everybody to shake hands with everybody else? Okay. We could simulate it, but honestly, I think the, uh, we're going to have to change the name of the handshake problem because I don't think people are going to ha shake hands anymore after COVID. But uh, there's some tricks here. First of all, are you going to shake hands with yourself? Well, no, that would be ridiculous, right? And if person A shakes hands with person B, does person B need to shake hands with person A? No, because they've already made, they've already done that handshake process, right? So this part's kind of cool. Um, there's two ways to do this problem. There's two ways to think about it. You both, you get the same answer either way, which is why I get kind of excited about it. We're going to do this problem. The first way we're going to do this problem actually doesn't use uh, a combination. It actually uses an arithmetic series. And then the second way we do the problem is going to involve the, the combination part. So here's the first way. And this, the first way I think is a little easier to understand. What I want everyone to do, um, draw a circle. And I want you to put eight, eight equally spaced dots on that circle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Has everybody got your eight dots? All right. And now what we're going to do is simulate handshakes. Okay, so here's person A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Now to simulate handshakes is we're going to draw a line from A to B, and this means A and B are shook hands. Got it? And then we're going to draw a line from A to C, A to D. How many hands did A shake hands? How many people did A shake hands with? Seven. Okay, so he shook hands with seven people. All right, so now we're going to go to B. 
So if I go to B, how many hands does B need to shake hands with? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? And how many hands does C need to shake with? Five. I mean, I could draw them, but you see he's got five people he's got to shake hands with. What about D? Four, three, two, one. And so if I want to know how many total handshakes happened, what do I need to do? Add them all up. So I have to add up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. Do you see that's an arithmetic series? See, in an arithmetic series, you need to know three pieces of information. You know the first term, the last term, and the number of terms. What's the first term? 1. What's the last term? Seven. Uh, what's the total number of terms? Eight. Oh, if you just count one to seven, you have seven. seven. You remember that was our formula? And when I work this out, okay, well, let's see, that's eight over two. So that's four. So how many total handshakes happened? We got 28, all right? So this is the arithmetic series, right? So this kind of connects to something that we did last week. Here's the cool way to do it. Um, how many people does it take to shake hands? Two, all right? And wait, so how many people in, so we have eight people in the class, right? And if I want to make a handshake, I have to pick two of them, don't I? And so what I want to do, if I want to, if I want to find out how many handshakes, is I can think of, well, if I have eight people, how many ways can I pick two of them? Right? Like you're thinking, like you think you've got eight people in this class, how many ways can you pick two of them? And like, the, I, like when you pick two, that's like one handshake. So just curious, what does eight choose two? Isn't that kind of neat? I, I, I like this because I really like when there's math problems you can do two completely different ways. It's just how you think about it. Yes? Um, would you be able to multiply 8 times 7 and divide it by 2? Well, well, isn't that what you did here? Oh, yeah. And oddly enough, if you compute 8 choose 2, that's going to be 8 factorial over 2 factorial, 6 factorial. If you work this out, that's 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down. There's 6 all the way down, and there's 2. Oh, look, that is 8 times 7 divided by 2. Kind of interesting, I think. But the, the, but the way you think about it is different. This, to me, is kind of like the brute force method. And this, to me, is kind of is elegant because you're thinking about you're, you're using a, sort of a clever counting argument for it, All right? Well, let's look at some other stuff. Let's say, all right. So let's say I've got, I've got a, I've got, I've got a class of twenty-five. But in this class of 25, I have 15 girls and I have 10 boys. All right? And I still want a committee, right? I want a committee of four. Right? But I have some restrictions here, right? If I want a committee of four, right? Um, If, uh, if I want a committee of four, then my restrictions are I want to have exactly two boys and exactly two girls. Right. So how do you do that? So I have a so I have twenty five students, but you know I have fifteen girls and ten boys, and I want to pick I want to I want to get a committee that has exactly two boys and has exactly two girls. Well. 
what you do is you, well, if, you, if it's exactly two boys and exactly two girls, let's pick how many boys we can have. If I want to, how many ways can I pick two boys? What would, how would you say it? How many total boys do you have? Ten. Ten. How many, how many boys are we picking for our committee? Two. I want, all right. Remember, my committee has to have two boys. So if I, if I want the, I'm going to pick the two boys, and so I know it's going to be ten, choose two. And how do I pick that has exactly two girls? What would that be? Perfect, because you have 15 girls, it's going to be 15 choose 2, and multiply those two numbers together. Because this is how many ways can you pick two boys, times how many ways can you pick two girls. And now we've, now we've got our total, you know, we've got our four-person committee, we have how many ways we can have our four-person committee, where we picked exactly two boys and exactly two girls. You right? Do you want the number? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> what is the number? It's 4,725. 4,725. Right. I was like, yeah. yeah, I was looking at you, you, you were, I was, I was like, it's like, uh, you were looking at me confused, and I was like, were you confused about this? No, you were confused because you were waiting for me to ask what's the number, right? But, so the idea is, right, when order doesn't matter, right? Um, so what I'm going to have you do and the, actually the last, here I'm going to pause this.